I posted this photo here on Instagram. Right after I posted it, somebody hit me up with a direct message and they asked me, sometimes I see that people have their puddles really close together. And when some people are TIG welding, they're spaced a little further apart, which is correct. Great question. So let's go over how I describe this to the students in my online TIG welding program. This is actually a term that I call stepping distance. I'm sure you could probably figure it out for yourself, but it refers to the distance in between each step where filler material is added to the weld. So this person on Instagram is referring to a weld pass that's crowded a little tighter together like this one here and comparing it to one with a greater stepping distance or a puddle spaced a little further apart like this example here. Now, this is just personal opinion here, but either one of these technically is just fine as long as they are done in a specific way. There's definitely some really important things we need to take into consideration when deciding what you want to do as far as a stepping distance. Let's take a look at the photo on my Instagram that this one is referring to. So we can see the stepping distance highlighted right here. Looking at some arc footage here now, you can see the pattern of how this is done. It's a combination of a movement, a pause, adding filler material, and then this is repeated. Looking at it at normal speed now, you can see the rhythm of it, movement, pause, add filler material, and repeat. So watching the arc footage, you can see how stepping distance is determined with each movement I make and how I add the filler material. Now, if you look at this diagram right here, you can see that ideally, we wanna cover a good portion of the previous puddle. For example, remember, if we are doing just a single dab of filler material like this, the area that's always gonna be the most prone to surface cracking, or sometimes you hear people call it crater cracking, this area is always gonna be in the center. No matter what distance of stepping you are using, your current puddle always wants to cover the center of the previous puddle. Now, if we take a look at the other style of stepping, we can see obviously the stepping distance is much tighter together here. Looking at some arc footage here again of this style, you can see that this is done without a pause for the most part. Each dab of filler material is added, kind of as you're running along with your travel speed. This method depends heavily on the consistency of somebody's travel speed and how consistent they can be with adding filler material. While I can do either style relatively consistently, I've always preferred to do a pause in between each dab. I find this particularly helpful when you're working around a radius of a pipe or something like this. Sometimes going around a profile like this can sometimes change the way a puddle behaves. Behaves. Every time I take just a little second to pause, I can ensure that everything is settled down exactly the way I need. Whereas sometimes with a tighter stepping distance when you're just moving continuously, I find I don't get as much time to really ensure this. Again, personal preference. Now, while we talked about stepping too far apart can expose the center of the puddles, stepping too close together can also present a downside as well. Sometimes when we really tighten up the stepping distance, this can actually decrease our travel speed sometimes. And when this happens, this can increase the overall heat input into your workpiece, resulting in overheating. What this can also cause is a problem that I refer to as overcrowding. Let's take a look at this example here. Here we can see a pass where I have highlighted five steps. Now the five steps you could ballpark would cover roughly around an inch or like 25 mil or something like that. Now compare it to a pass where we have a tighter stepping pattern. We can see that the five steps I have highlighted cover a smaller distance. So the problem with overcrowding is we've taken the set amount of filler material for this first five steps here and then crunching them together into a tighter distance like this. We can see the same amount of filler material in a shorter amount of space. It's gonna be crowded into a more confined area. So essentially, when we take the same amount of filler material and we squash it together, we're going to have that filler material stand up a little higher in the center. This problem is always going to look like this example here. We can see that the filler material is stacked really, really high in the center. We have completely lost fusion between the filler and base material. Bomber, dude. So if you want to experiment with tightening up your stepping distance, usually typically not as much filler material is required. This will obviously be something you have to carefully watch on the fly as you are welding. When stepping a little bit further apart, like I prefer to do, I always have to make sure that I compensate with adequate filler material. Sometimes stepping a little further apart can cause the filler material to fall a little bit flat. And when this happens, it can cause inadequate penetration to the base material. So as you're welding, you wanna keep a close eye on that. So either method of stepping has different things that you need to be aware of. A tighter stepping distance can overcrowd the filler material and it can also overheat the workpiece if you're not paying attention. But sometimes working with a larger stepping distance like I prefer to use, you have to make sure that you fill up everything adequately as you step. Obviously there are nuances and technicalities for each method, but from my experience, from what I've learned over the years, all the welding tests I've taken, and like two decades of TIG welding production in the industry, the method that I am using here, as well as the method that I teach in my online TIG welding program, this is one that I prefer to use and I find students have the best success with. 
So these diagrams that I've been showing you here, these are some new textbook pages that you can go get right now for free. There is a new area on my website that I have just started. If you wanna have these as a reference while you practice, hit the link in the description below, print those out, get yourself some learning material for free. I'm gonna be doing it with a lot of episodes coming up here. Be sure to hit that link next. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty, Phil and Shell. Talk soon, peace.